organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, the continuing violence in Kenya. How many people have died and the numbers that keep rising. Are you a match? The UI welcomes a new chapter on campus finding bone marrow donors for patients around the nation. And in sports, the Hawks buck the Broncos. Highlights and analysis on the way. All that and more on the way next. This is Daily Iowan TV. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now, you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Hager. And I'm Kelsey Kniff. We begin tonight's newscast with death tolls in Kenya. The Red Cross has counted 68 dead and 175 injured. And the numbers are still climbing. Islamic extremists took fire on Westgate Mall in Nairobi, Kenya, Saturday. The gunfire and explosions continued into Sunday. Kenya's president said there are 10 to 15 Al-Qaeda gunmen involved. They are holding 30 hostages inside the mall. Kenyan military entered the shopping center and are working to end the attack. We connected with one of our, a Kenyan native here on campus, David Tuai. David Tuai's brother lives in Nairobi, but thankfully not near the mall. I'm not so sure what the government is going to do next. Of course, Kenyan, Kenyan forces are in you know, Somalia right now with the armies of troops from the rest of Africa trying to you know, fight the Shabaab. But I don't think that is going to stop. The Westgate Mall attack is the deadliest terror attack in Kenya since 1998 when Al-Qaeda blew up the U.S. Embassy. Closer to home, U.I. students are saving lives. The University of Iowa is the first college campus in the state to start a Be The Match chapter. Be The Match is a national bone donor uh, marrow registry. To register, students can log into bethematch.org. They will then receive a swab kit in the mail. Registrants swab their cheek and return the kit to the National Marrow Donor Program. The DNA is entered into a Be The Match database. Cancer patients search the database daily for matches. Students lose interest in science, technology, engineering, and math as they grow up. That's what results from the Iowa testing program suggests. Those subjects are referred to as STEM. The study indicates that between the third grade and high school graduation, students' interests declined steadily in STEM subjects. Researchers saw the deepest or the steepest declines in the areas of engineering and computer technology. More than 240,000 students participated in the study. Still to come on Daily Iowan TV, First Lady Michelle Obama is back at it again in her ongoing effort to reduce childhood obesity. What is she asking for now? We have that in just a bit. And in sports, more analysis on Saturday's win over Western Michigan. Stay tuned, more after this. Iowa SJMC. Want a major that'll take you somewhere? I joined and now I make videos for the university. I joined and now I work for the most trusted news source in America. S.J. C. Yes, Rebecca, today was a beautiful first day of fall and this nice weather should continue throughout the week. Tomorrow morning will be a chilly 59 degrees with clear skies. Moving into the afternoon, that temperature should raise up to a sunny 73 degrees before dropping back down to 61 in the evening. Looking ahead to the extended forecast, Tuesday will be in the low 80s with partly cloudy skies. Both Wednesday and Thursday will be 83 degrees and sunny. The high temp this week will be on Friday with 86 degrees, and Saturday shows a 70% chance of thunderstorms with a temp in the low 80s. Well, this week is looking to be warm and sunny, so make sure to get outside and enjoy this nice weather while you still can. That's all I have for your weather. Back to you two. And on Saturday night, almost 500 students celebrated the Chinese Mid-Autumn Festival. Chinese people around the world celebrate Mid-Autumn on the fifth day of the eighth month in the Chinese calendar. 
They celebrate on a full moon in late September. The dean of the international program, Downing Thomas, says it's a good way to enhance culture on campus, and it also helps Chinese students connect and meet friends. The UI has strived for sustainability over the last few years, and now they're making headway. The Carver Hawkeye Arena addition and renovation project at the University of Iowa has recently earned the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Gold Certificate. This is also known as the LEED. LEED is a nationally recognized benchmark for sustainable buildings. It looks at multiple factors, such as use of water and energy. The project contained many programs to make the area more sustainable, including the construction of a practice facility for the basketball programs, expansion of the locker rooms, and the creation of office, meeting, and storage space for the athletics department. And the minimum requirement is silver. This facility actually earned gold, which means we took great steps to make it an energy efficient building that everyone can benefit by. The UI now maintains a minimum standard of LEED Silver uh, certification for all new buildings. And now what's happening beyond Iowa. Three Americans have died after a shooting on Saturday in Afghanistan. Coalition officials say a man wearing an Afghan army uniform shot and killed three U.S. soldiers. The U.S. soldiers served in the Army, Special Operations Forces, and were taking part in training exercise at the time. Amidst violence across the world, there was also turmoil a little closer to home. A park shooting in Chicago Thursday left 12 injured, including a three-year-old boy. Officials and community members point the gang violence and pre uh, prevalent drug use in Chicago as a reason for the attack. The attacker has not yet been identified. Stay tuned, we've got Daily Iowan TV reporter Muriel Kone on standby for the latest on childhood obesity. And Daily Iowan TV sports coverage of Saturday's 56-point blowout of Western Michigan. That's coming up next. Get up for the return of the state's finest attraction. The players are prepared and anxious to get things started, and this time you too can be ready for every Saturday on the Gridiron. Download the Daily Iowa app for your iPad or iPhone for your official playbook to the 2013-2014 Iowa Hawkeyes football season. And be sure to check out everything black and gold all season long on DailyIowan.com. A lot of health stories making headlines this week. That's right, and we have Daily Iowa reporter Muriel Kone standing by to give us the latest. Thank you guys and let's get started with First Lady Michelle Obama. She's making headlines again this week and this time she's asking food companies and television broadcasters to do more to promote healthier foods to children. And she wants it done right away. This is the latest effort by First Lady in her endeavors to fight childhood obesity in this country. Mrs. Obama acknowledged recent progress in reducing childhood obesity but says, I'm here today with one simple request and that is to do even more and move even faster to market responsibly to our kids. Well, that's all I have for you all tonight. Rebecca Kelsey, take it away. Thanks, Muriel. Now we'll toss it over to Daily Iowa TV's Jordan Caballales for a look at Hawkeye Sports. After yesterday's game, Jordan, what kind of analysis do you have for, you, for us? Welcome back to the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio. Going into this weekend's matchup, Kirk's crew topped the 500 mark for the first time since last October. Four defensive and special teams touchdowns later, the black and gold are riding a three-game winning streak into Big Ten play. Their longest such streak since 2010, when the Hawks ended their season in South Beach with an Orange Bowl championship. Daily Iowan TV Sports was there, and our own Jalen Socek kicks off our coverage. It's game day here in historic Kinnick Stadium, and while fans are busy tailgating, the Iowa football team is here preparing for Western Michigan. Today's matchup is a game of threes, with Iowa hoping to extend their win streak for three games for the first time since 2010, while the Broncos look to end their three-game losing streak this season. Iowa is 0-2 against the Broncos, who lost to them both in 2000 and 2007, the last time Western Michigan was able to beat a Big Ten team. And now we'll hand it to Kevin Glick with your post-game analysis. It's the last hit up for the Hawks before they begin Big Ten play next Saturday, and things could not have gone better for the black and gold against Western Michigan. Let's pick this one up. Iowa already up 3-0 right now when Jake Rudock picks out Jacob Hillier for the 21-yard pitch and catch 10-0 Hawks early in this one. Second quarter now, look who breaks loose. Cavante Martin manually finds some space, picks up some blocks, 
and takes it all the way to the house, 83 yards. Once he gets there, it gets to be 17-0. Hawkeyes up. He wasn't done, though. New possession, same result. KMM fields another punt, and for the second time in a row, takes it to the house for six, this time 63 yards. Jake Rudock and co. loving it on the bench. And it's 24-0, not even midway through the second quarter. Still in the second quarter, Western Michigan driving until Tanner Miller intercepts a Western Michigan pass in the end zone to preserve the 24-0 lead. Hawks and us loving the game. The Broncos responded with a field goal to make it 24-3, but the Hawks answered right back with seven points, this time Mark Wiseman punching it in from four yards out. He had 43 yards on 10 carries today. Phil Parker's defense back on the field after that punt return, but not for long. B.J. Lowry gets the second pick of the day for the defense, but instead of a touchback, it's taken for a touchdown. The second touchdown in 30 seconds to make it 33-3, heading into the half. Third quarter now, and after a Jordan Canzari fumble, B.J. Lowry takes the ball right back and in for a score. The second of the day to join Martin Manley in the two-touchdown club to make it 45-3, and Iowa fans are pumped up as the Hawks are cruising to 3-1. and one. We bring you now to the fourth quarter with C.J. Beathard in as he finds Damon Powell for the deep heave. He also had a touchdown in the game. By the time this one's all over, Hawks steamroll the Broncos 59-3 in a game that saw Iowa become the second FBS team in 10 seasons with two punt returns and two interception returns. All go for touchdowns in the game. Let's throw it over to Chelsea Brown on the field who has all the post-game analysis. The Hawkeyes hosted their last non-conference game of the season, matching up to the Western Michigan Broncos. The Hawks started off strong right after the Meyer kickoff, where Marcus Collins wraps around Darian Chance, setting the tone for the rest of the game. But the special teams didn't stop there. The MVP of the game, without a doubt, goes to Cavante Martin Manley. Not only did he have the most returning yardage, he had not one, but two punt returns, putting up two touchdowns for the Hawkeyes. On the first punt return, Martin Manley in the backfield receiving the punt from Broncos' Jay Schroeder finds an opening gap on the left side with some extra help with the block from Chad Gilson that puts him right into the end zone. Again, Martin Manley on his second punt return for a touchdown with an excellent block by Jacob Hillier, returning the ball for a total of 63 yards. Yeah, it, it, it's really tricky. Um, if they get a good punt off, you know, it could go over your head. If not, it could be coming at you really hard, and it's hard to catch them. It's hard to judge them. So that's the hardest thing. And also seeing a ball off the punter's foot because he's rolling out, so he's behind guys blocking, and it's hard to see it. Sometimes it's hard to catch it, but um, we were able to execute today. Martin Manley marks the first Hawkeye ever to return two punts for a touchdown in the same game. He returned a total of four punts for 184 yards, which is 17 less than legendary Niles Kinnick. Yeah, I was kind of I was kind of bitter about that that I wasn't able to get it, but to even be mentioned in that in that category, um, I was truly humbled by it. The Western Michigan Broncos were blown out by the Iowa Hawkeyes with a 59 to three finish. This marks Iowa's third straight win and puts the rest their losing streak against Western Michigan. The Hawks head to Minnesota this Saturday to begin Big Ten action in hopes of keeping the Florida Rosedale in their possession. This is Chelsea Brown inside Kinnick Stadium. Daily Iowa TV Sports. Obviously a whole lot of other Hawkeye sports in action over the weekend as well. Analysis of everything black and gold coming up on Monday's edition of the program. But for now, it's back to you at the desk. Thanks, Jordan. That wraps up our Sunday newscast tonight. But take a quick look at the headlines in tomorrow's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read which longtime uh, City High School faculty member is getting a music room dedicated to her. And also make sure to check out when Brewer's Bagels will return to downtown Iowa City. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.